A few years ago, some people in the United States decided to take a poll. They wanted to research how many people and who were Christians or who called themselves Christians. And they divided it into age ranges. And so people uh, over the age of 65, in their poll, they found there were about 60% that were, that called themselves Christians or evangelicals. From about 40 to 65, age 40 to 65, they found out there were about 35% that called themselves Christians. From age 25 to 40, they found that there were about 17% that called themselves Christians. And 25 years of age and below, it was only about 5 or 6%. Well, why the drop-off? Why, why the decline in the percentages there? Well, one, re one reason that's obvious is that the younger generation did not accept what the older generation wanted to pass along to them, whether it be Christian principles or not. They wanted to do their own thing. And so whatever Christian principles that existed were rejected. Why? I can only offer my own explanation for that. I have seen many times in my life where with the more harshness that you offer something, with the more zeal and more anger and condemnation, the more that people want to reject that. And it's even true with Christian principles. And the Bible reflects something vastly different than that. Romans 2 verse 4 says this, Do you think lightly of the goodness of God, of the love of God? Because it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Hmm. Now what do you think when you think of repentance? A lot of times I've seen preachers who've associated repentance with angry preaching, condemning, going to hell type of preaching. And people have rejected that message. Or people have accepted that message out of fear and they've lived in fear and troubling of God. But Romans 2 4 is saying that's the love of God, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. In 2 Timothy 2 24 and 25, Paul is instructing Timothy, saying, don't be quarrelsome, don't get into fights, ignore senseless conversations, but also, when you're needing to correct people, correct with gentleness, not with harshness. Why? Because God can grant them repentance. That gentleness will help people to come to repentance when needed. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, it says if anybody is caught in some sort of trespass or error or, or sin or whatever the word you want to use. If anybody is caught in a trespass, restore that person in a spirit of gentleness, knowing that you too could be tempted the same way. What does Paul mean by that? It's simply saying that if you use harshness and condemnation and anger to try to correct people, whether it be these people or other people are going to use anger and condemnation and harshness to correct you. Harshness and condemnation are not going to attract people to God. They're not going to, it's not going to have people repent or, or think about uh, whatever wrongdoings they have. People are just going to push that away. Just like we saw in that, in that little research and that poll that people did. People don't want even the best thing for them if it's offered with harshness, with anger, and with condemnation. On the other hand, we cannot be fearful to bring correction. We need to be sensitive as to the moment because some people just don't want to hear it. And we can't be sharing something with people going, I don't want to hear it because they will push away even scripture and biblical principles. What we need to do, first of all, is be sensitive to the moment, and secondly, not be fearful when the moment comes that we need to offer the correction. But thirdly, that we offer it with gentleness and kindness and goodness, 
because that is the way that God himself corrects us. That's why we've come into the kingdom of God. That is why we follow Jesus, because he's been gentle with us. Not afraid to correct us, but gentle with us. Think about the story with the woman caught in adultery. You all know the story if you're a Christian. The religious leaders caught this woman in adultery. They laid her before Jesus and said, okay, Jesus, the punishment for her is death by stoning. What are you going to do? Are you going to pick up a stone? And what Jesus did is he, he, is he, he, he bent down and he started writing in the sand. What did he do? He was writing in the sand and then he got up and he said, hey, if, you got, if, if you're without sin, go ahead and stone her. Throw the first stone. And the religious leaders, one by one, walked out. They left. And Jesus told her, hey, woman, where are your accusers? Is there anybody here to accuse you? Accuse you? And she looked up and, and said, no, there's no one here, Lord. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus said. But don't go sinning anymore. Go, but don't sin anymore. Jesus didn't condone her sin. He corrected her, but he did so in a spirit of gentleness and restored her. Our gentleness and kindness, even in moments of correction, can bring restoration. So let's remember that we need to be sensitive as to the time of correction. We need to be not fearful, but have courage to correct. But we need to be gentle and kind, showing the love of God when we do correct. May God help you today, and may God help you to hear from Him, and in case you've been caught in an error, let God bring His correction, because He'll do it gently, kindly with you, so that you could be gentle and kind with others in their moment of error. As God brings to me these words, they convict me first off. And so I offer to you the, the consolation, the comfort, but also the conviction that God passes along to me. And if you've received something good from this, recommend this video to your friends. Pass it along. Help people to receive more the Word of God and the love of God because that's all I desire is that people will receive the love of God, the Word of God that will transform their lives just as it's transformed mine. May God bless you in Jesus' name.